So welcome to an absolute beginner tutorial on how you can get started into building your own robots using Python and the Adafruit Circuit Pi boards. Um, this tutorial is going to use the Metro M4 Express and a Moo uh, editor installed in your computer. I'll have links into the description down below. But this is an absolute beginner tutorial on getting started from having zero robotics knowledge to be able to start writing your very first program. So let's go get started. Alrighty, so the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need your Metro board plugged into your computer via micro USB cable. Once you have this thing properly connected, you should notice in the bottom right hand corner of our screen that we should have a detected new CircuitPython board and we are no longer flashing red. Uh, if you don't have the CircuitPython board connected, um, you might want to check if you're running on Mac. Uh, if you're running below 14.2, or sorry, below 14.4, there is an error in not being able to read serial ports properly. So we can check that things are loaded in here. We should have a new CircuitPython drive um, with a few things in here. Our code, our library, uh, an SD, and then a boot.txt. So inside Moo Editor, I'm going to go ahead and choose load. I'm going to loot code.py. Uh, code.py is the main file that your CircuitPy device will run. If you're not using code.py, uh, it won't actually run the correct program. So there's two ways that we can write code uh, to our um, device here and to our robot. We can either write it in a script file in here, or we can write it in something called a REPL or a read, evaluate, print loop. What a REPL is, is it allows us to write individual lines of code and automatically see the output that. So for instance, I've got a print line here where I wrote the word lines of code and the output automatically shows up. The problem with using a REPL is that it only allows to do one line of code at a time. So for the majority of this, we're going to use scripting that allows us to execute multiple uh, tasks at a time. So let's go ahead and do our first um, program here. Uh, the first thing I might start writing is I'll write a print, simple print statement. What print statement does, it allows us to output something to our serial port, which is actually the microcontroller connecting back to the computer. So rather than us having the computer write something, it's actually the microcontroller sending signals back to our computer via our serial port. So I'm just going to print, hello, circuit Python. And I'm going to make sure that I open my parentheses and uh, close my parentheses. So you can see there's little pink highlights. Same thing with my quotation marks. If I save this, it should automatically run onto my board. And you notice that now I have this output that shows up that says, hello, CircuitPython, and just printed this simple line. You'll also notice that I have pressed any key, so now I'm actually in my REPL. Up on my board, I've got a white light. If that happens, we don't want to be in the REPL. You can either push the reset button. What that is, it's going to be a hard reset. It's going to disconnect your device from your computer, and then it's going to reconnect it later. Alternatively, what you can do is if I'm inside the REPL here, you can also hold Control D and that'll break you out of the REPL uh, in a soft reboot without disconnecting from your computer. So the cool thing about um, Python and uh, computer programs is that you can also have math running inside of these, obviously. So there's a lot of different arithmetic operators that you can use. Uh, for instance, I can use uh, addition, so four plus five. I can use subtraction, 10 minus six. I can use uh, multiplication, like 5 times 12, whatever have you. I can use division, 25 divided by 5. And the symbol is the exact same you use in a graphing calculator. I can use floor division. So if I want to say um, 10 divided by 3, it'll bring me a non-rounded or bring a rounded down number. So 10 divided by 3 would actually be equal to 3, as opposed to 3.333 or 3 point, yeah, 3333. Um, I can use modulo, I can use exponentials, there's a lot of different math you can use. Whatever you can type, for the most part, inside of a graphing calculator, you can use the same symbols here. So let's go ahead and let's see what kind of things output if I were to just use a simple addition statement here. So let's just say print 4 plus 5, and let's see what happens in the serial port. If I save this over, it should automatically run my code, and I should have my code output of 9 right there. Let's try something different. Let's try print 10 multiplied by 999. Save it over, and let's see what output we should get. We should get 9,990. 
Now let's try something a little bit different. And we are gonna play around with some variables. Uh, a variable is effectively a bucket that you can store data inside of. You can store different kinds of data. You can store integers, which are whole numbers, things like zero, things like 90, things like 2010, whatever have you. You can also store floats. Floats are decibel numbers. So anything that has a decimal after it is considered a float. It is a floating point. Um, there's decimals after. You can store Booleans. Booleans stand for true or false. Yeah, either on or off. Sometimes you'll see Booleans as zero or one as well for false and true, respectively. I guess in this case, I would say one and zero for true and false, respectively. But in Python, uh, or at least in CircuitPython, it's almost always true and false with a capital T and capital F. You can also store strings. Sometimes they're called stirs for short. Integers are sometimes called ints for short. And then booleans are sometimes called bools for short. And a string is anything that is in between uh, quotation marks. So like New York could be a string or Canada could be another string. I can even use single quotation marks inside like dog house is also a string. So either double quotes or single quotes, as long as you're wrapping it around. Those are some really basic variables we'll get into for this tutorial. So what we're gonna try now, is we're gonna try defining some variables. So let's say city is equal to New York as a string. We'll say temperature is equal to 23 as an int. And then we'll say rainy is equal to false because it is not raining. Now keep in mind that false is capital F. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to print the variable city. And then I'd also like you to print out temperature and rainy. Um, I pause the video now, see what your output is and see if it matches mine. And we should see I get New York 23 and false. Now why did I not get the word city or the word temperature. That's because I'm printing the actual variable itself. This variable is storing the value string New York. This variable temperature is storing the value 23. And this variable rainy is storing the value false. For example, if I were to print city in quotation marks, like we did when we printed hello microcontroller or hello micropython, uh, you're going to notice that instead of printing the value of our variable city, well, let's see what happens. Let's save it. You now notice I get the literal string city instead of the value of my variable city. So when I'm working with variables, whatever the word city is gets replaced with the value that's beside it. This is called an assignment statement in Python. Uh, now, now let's keep going. Let's grab all of this. We'll delete these lines and let's try that one more time. We're going to say that the product is equal to a laptop, the quantity is equal to 5, the price is equal to 999.99 cents, and in stock is equal to true. So I'd like you to print out these four variables down below, take a pause, and see what you would expect the outcome to be. So coming back, hopefully your print statements were the literal string laptop, 5, 999.99, and true. Uh, so that's a very basic understanding of some very basic Python syntax. Last thing I want to point out to, you'll notice that none of this actually printed on the serial port. That's because these are comments. And a comment in Python is anything that's got a hashtag or a pound symbol in front of it. And what this tells the computer to do is it tells you to ignore any line that's on here. The comments are just for you as a programmer, not for the computer to understand. So for instance, if I were to say, write print, this is a comment, this line would not print. So if I even were to save it, uh, actually I've got to get on my REPL, I'll control D, give it a save you'll notice that nothing about print this as a comment actually showed up because it's still inside of a comment. Um, it's all grayed out, so it's not, the computer just completely ignores that. 
So I hope you found that useful as a very basic introduction to um, some Python syntax uh, for robotics. Uh, and uh, best of luck on your next project.